Uh, I want to talk about the myth now that merit pay can improve teaching. In my country, since No Child Left Behind and all the accountability, um, we've, we've had a lot of people interested in merit pay. The reformers assert that you can improve education by testing more often, attaching high stakes to students and teachers' scores. The theory seems to be that what is needed to whip lazy students and lazy teachers into shape is incentives. Students should be held back front, teachers should be fired, schools should be closed down if test scores are not up to stuff. But over a decade of No Child Left Behind shows us that these ideas have resulted in no changes in the gap between rich and poor kids, black and white kids, and uh, nothing much has happened with that accountability movement. President Obama made it worse. He had to pay for performance or merit pay. The state was going to get federal money. It had to show that it, the evaluation system used for teachers had to be 50% or so uh, based on student test scores. Um, Student growth data, they call it. Most states have adopted one of these value-added measures, VAMS, to statistically measure teacher performance on student standardized tests. VAMS try to measure growth from year to year, so they might use the spring testing score for fourth grade and the spring testing score for fifth grade, put every teacher in there and see who grows the most. Those that grow the most get a bonus or are applauded. Those that grow the least are told they're bad teachers and have to leave. Um, these tests are unreliable and they're invalid for lots of reasons. The systems also encourage corruption, as high-stakes tests always do. And they impede teacher collaboration. One of the well-documented characteristics that make many schools terrific in your country and mine is that schools where teachers collaborate with each other generally do better than schools that don't. It has to do with the social life of schools. And you folks here in Alberta are very good at recognizing that and trying to promote collaboration. Um, uh, High-stakes tests upon which VAMs rely are known to narrow the curriculum in many schools, to foster what has been known as drill and kill. And for conservative education policymakers and conservative think tanks, merit pay is seen as an effective way to increase teacher performance, even if it's destroying collaboration at the same time. Competition among teachers and among schools is prized by the German folks, the reformers of the market ideology. Rivalry, they, rivalry, they say, will encourage the teachers to teach better. This assumes that they're lazy and not teaching hard now. And then the reformers say better teachers will uh, get paid more, and the worst teachers will not, and they'll either get better themselves or leave the profession. But it's hard to think of you folks in education as motivated primarily by money. I, I don't know how many of you went into this field for the cash. Um, I certainly have not met anybody who said, this is the best job in the world. Um, you do it for other reasons, and they're really quite noble. Uh, we all want more money, we all need more money, we can use more money, our families sometimes suffer because we're not in higher paying jobs. But you go into education not for the cash, so a cash incentive, which might be fine for picking tomatoes, is probably not appropriate for teachers. And the, the reformers can't get this through their head. Um, teachers do not simply make things or sell things where objective metrics might be appropriate. They teach children morality and citizenship. They teach how to play nicely. <coughs> why bullying is wrong. They teach citizenship. They teach how to turn out a newspaper and why one student's writing is so moving and another student's artwork is so lovely. And lately they've had to teach why sexting is not such a good idea. <laughs> In fact, much of what teachers do is very hard to measure accurately, if at all, and thus bonuses dependent on objective measures are really silly. This is where the business minded folks miss the boat. Think about a situation where competition is appropriate, maybe in a baseball or a hockey league. Coaches vie for the championship trophy each year, hoping for victory and to crush the other team. Unlike teachers then, coaches of opposing teams won't share with each other. Teachers share. They don't meet with each other on their days off to reflect on their decisions and discuss opportunities for improvement with <coughs> colleagues. They don't pour over data together to develop a plan for a particular kid or a group of kids. Coaches simply want to win. And to do that, others must lose. Most importantly, coaches know that they need good players. So what do they do? They recruit. They search for the best, the strongest, smartest players they can find in baseball and hockey. They look for players who have winning attitudes, players who spend time at home practicing, possibly with a private trainer. It helps if the players have a supportive family who take time to show for them to practice, and the has the money to feed them well before a game. The coach needs players who are willing to put in 110% at all times and have the nerves, uh, to battle through nerves in close games. 
Coaches need this because to be the best, you have to start with the better. That's the coach's idea. Well, this is the strategy of many of America's charter schools. Uh, they pursue high test scores and high rates of graduation by dumping the weakest. <laughs> How do you get to be the best? Dump the ones you don't want.